Hello, hello and buongiorno amici! I'm Peter and here I'm telling you stories about the most interesting European cars of the 80s and 90s. Today we are talking about some kind of a unicorn, a white whale of the 90s that everybody knows but not so many have driven it or even seen it in the flesh. Well, in this case it's a bright red whale, Ferrari F50. But before we start, thank you very much for watching and commenting on my videos and for subscribing to my channel, I really appreciate your trust. And if you are not subscribed yet, please subscribe to stay tuned and not miss new videos. Thank you so much and let's get back to the car. Ferrari 50 was launched in 1995 to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Ferrari. The production continued for only two years until 1997 and only 349 cars were produced, plus three racing prototypes Ferrari F50 GT. For comparison, Ferrari F40, a previous supercar of Ferrari, was made in the number of 1315 and the next one, Ferrari Enza, in the quantity of 400. This makes the F50 the second rarest mass-produced Ferrari supercar after Ferrari 288 GTO with its 272 cars. I already have a video about Ferrari F40 on this channel, and we will definitely speak about Ferrari 288 GTO someday in the future. The story of the creation of the F50 is not that dramatic as it was for Ferrari F40, but the car itself is very interesting. And the most interesting part of it, of course, is the engine. The V12 naturally aspirated engine was built on the basis of Formula 1 F130 engine which Ferrari used in the season of 1990 in their Ferrari 641 Formula 1 car. That year Alan Prost won 5 Grand Prix with this engine, twice came the second and also twice the third. Nigel Mansell in the second car with this engine won one race, got 3 second positions and came third once. The engine used in the Formula 1 car was a 3.5 liter engine. Later, in 1993, Ferrari used the same engine in the Ferrari 333 SP sports prototype race car, where it was increased up to 4 liters. But for the heavier F50, Ferrari engineers decided to increase the engine's displacement even more, so the F50 got a 4.7 liter naturally aspirated V12 with 60 volts, 5 volts per cylinder. This engine produced 512 horsepower, which was more than enough for the car with the weight of just 1230 kg or 2700 pounds. The engine itself was very light for a V12, 198 kg or 437 pounds. All cars had a 6-speed manual transmission with a stick on the central tunnel. Ferrari thought about using a sequential gearbox with the paddle shifters, but decided that this technology was too new and raw at the moment to be reliable enough on a production car. The top speed was 312 km per hour or 194 miles per hour, with 0 to 60 in just 3.8 seconds. So the F50 accelerated faster than F40, which had 0 to 60 in 4.1 seconds. But the claimed top speed of the F40 was higher, 201 miles per hour instead of 194 in the F50. But let's be honest, both those cars are not about small differences in speed and dynamics but about beauty, style, exclusive prestige and dreams. The F50 was designed by studio Pininfarina and namely Pietro Camardella, the same designer who created the F40. The look of the F50 was based on the 1989 concept car Ferrari Mythos, designed by the same Pietro Camardella. Some sources also say that another Pininfarina designer, Lorenzo Ramassiotti, who later became the general manager of Pininfarina, also participated in the F50 project but other mention only Pietro Camardella. The overall appearance of the car was considered questionable when the car was first introduced. Some Ferrari connoisseurs even think that this car is the ugliest Ferrari ever made. But with time this appearance became some kind of classics, and now it looks amazing in my opinion. The look of the hood, or better say, a front compartment in this case, with its curvy lines and large nostrils, actually mimics the nose of Formula 1 cars. The fans inside the large holes are used simultaneously for cooling the radiator and for creating additional downforce. The openings in the front bumper were used for radiator and for cooling the front brakes, a rather nice piece of engineering. The large wing in the back of the car was now more naturally integrated with the body than on the Ferrari F40. And probably the most interesting thing about the exterior of this car is that all had open target bodies. The roof above the driver and passenger was removable. The owners had options to use the car topless, with a hard carbon fiber roof or with a soft cloth roof. 
but the process of the installation and removal of the roof was not that quick and easy, so usually the owners choose to use their F50s either open or with the hard top all the time, depending on the climate and personal preferences. Most of the F50s were painted in Rosa Corsa red color, but there were 31 yellow cars, 8 dark red Rosa Braccetta, 4 silver and 4 black ones. Inside the Ferrari F50 wasn't very luxury decorated, but it was equipped slightly better than the F40. At least the F50 had the interior door latches instead of simple cord in the F40s. The car had an air conditioner, a very basic one, but it was there. And it had a trick computer showing various information about the car systems. And that's probably all convenient systems that were available in this very exclusive car. This car was not about the comfort at all. It was about the speed, emotions and driving experience. The F50 was built on the F1 principles with the engine bolted directly to the monocoque where the driver and passenger sat. This made this car very solid. But this meant also that all vibrations of the engine were transferred directly to the driver. When you rev the engine up accelerating, you could literally feel this with your back and the whole body. The F50 was a very loud car with a very hard suspension. This made it a very uncomfortable car for everyday driving. But the F50 wasn't made for this. The same things that made it uncomfortable – solid build, stiff suspension, loud Formula 1-like noise, lack of convenience features sacrificed in favor of lower weight – all these things made it really great on the track. In the hands of an experienced driver, the F50 could make miracles and be extremely satisfying and enjoyable, making the drivers feel as an integral part of this mechanical monster. The handling of the car wasn't absolutely perfect, it had a tendency to understeer, exactly like the Formula 1 Ferrari 641 which gave the F50 its engine. But this was controllable and gave the F50 its own charm and distinctive driving style. At least all reviews on the F50 from professional racing drivers which I could find were very positive. In 1996 Ferrari made even more advanced racing prototype on the basis of the F50, under the name F50 GT. It was intended for participation in the global GT series. These cars had a modified body with a non-removable hard top and distinctive rear wing on a single central mount. The engine power was increased to 739 crazy horses with a top speed of 374 km per hour or 234 miles per hour and 0 to 60 in just 2.9 seconds, just a little slower than the F22 jet fighter. Unfortunately, Ferrari soon decided to withdraw its participation in the GT races because of some disagreements with the FIA regarding competing racing prototypes of Porsche and Mercedes-Benz. They concentrated their effort on the Formula 1 instead, and very successfully. This was the beginning of the heyday of Michael Schumacher in Scuderia. But this meant the end of the F5 GT project. Out of six chassis built, three were destroyed and three were sold to Ferrari collectors in the United States and Japan. These cars are extremely hard to meet, and if you see one on the street, you may consider yourself a lucky person. There is a rumor about one more car looking like an F50 GT, but it isn't confirmed. If it exists, it is an aftermarket conversion of some other Ferrari, or a custom-built replica. Well, was the Ferrari F50 a good car? There are not that many reviews of it for obvious reasons. Only 349 of these cars were built and most of them almost never leave the garages of their owners. So, real-life reviews are rare and usually biased. Maybe not intentionally, but for many car enthusiasts even the opportunity to drive and review the F50 is extremely exciting, and this is understandable. Jeremy Clarkson considers the F50 one of the worst cars ever made. He thinks that it's loud, uncomfortable, poor handling and overpriced. Doug Demira, on the contrary, thinks that this car is amazing, one of the most amazing cars in the world, and most of other reviewers agree with him. David Cironi couldn't hide a happy smile the whole time when he drove the F50 on the track. It's obviously not the car for everyday driving or for long distance trips, but it is a beautiful, stunning and extremely capable car on a racetrack, if you have enough driving skills to unleash its power, of course. At the end of the day, the Ferrari F50 is probably the closest car to the Formula 1 which you can legally drive on a public road. If you can afford one, of course. The current market price for the Ferrari F50 is from 3.3 to 5.4 million US dollars, depending on the condition and the negotiation skills of the buyer, seller and their brokers. And it's not that easy to find one. With a small amount produced, most of the cars are in private collections of Ferrari collectors who aren't very eager to part with them. But they appear on the market at auctions or exotic car dealers from time to time. 
These cars are older than 25 years now, so you can legally import the European space cars into the US as well. And this slightly widens the area of search. But if you do have enough money and passion for Ferrari cars, you probably already learned the ways to find one of them. And buying one is a very good idea actually, because they are beautiful, enjoyable, and they perfectly hold their collectible value. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you happen to drive the Ferrari F50 or even own one of them, please tell me about your personal experience in the comments below. I would really love to learn more about the real life impressions of this car. And if you like this video, please give me thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. New interesting stories are coming soon. Grazie mille amici! And see you next time!